Today, we're going to talk about JP Morgan Equity Premium Income, commonly known as JEPI. J E P I is the ticker symbol. JEPI, is it worth owning? Is it good? And is there something better? We will discuss those questions during this video. JEPI, it doesn't have a long track record. It was established in May of 2020. As an aside note, JP Morgan was pretty cutthroat. If you haven't watched the series on the History Channel called The Men Who Built America, it's fascinating to watch how JP Morgan uh, gained his wealth and was a master tactician in the business world. A little bit ruthless, but sometimes it is that way. All right, getting back to the subject, JP really aims to try to be the best of three worlds, or at least have nice returns within three worlds. Number one, it aims to provide a high monthly dividend. A monthly dividend is unique. Many of the dividends tend to pay quarterly, or most of them do. A monthly dividend can be very attractive for someone who is looking for a monthly cash flow as part of their budget. Number two, it aims for capital appreciation. And number three, they aim to have low volatility. This video will explain how they are returning on two of these three aims. Now remember that this fund has only existed for a little more than a year, and so there is not a long-term track record for any of these three goals. Let's discuss the fund's investing strategy and how that applies to these three goals of a nice dividend, capital appreciation, and aiming for low volatility. The fund follows an 80%, 20% plan. 80% of the funds will be invested in predominantly the S&P 500 index. They do state that they have the option of choosing stocks or equities that are not within the S&P 500 index. They are looking for stocks that are undervalued and also have low volatility. The other 20% they are using in something called an ELN. ELN stands for Equity Linked Notes. They use the other 20% of the funds to purchase equity linked notes. You may be asking yourself, what is an equity linked note? We will cover those quickly. This is a nice document that discusses equity linked notes. I will put a link to its page on the internet so that if you're interested, you can read through it. An ELN is structured by combining the economics of a long call option on equity with a long discount bond position. This investment structure generally provides 100% principal protection. The coupon or final payment at maturity is determined by the appreciation of the underlying equity. Here's a nice graphic that quickly explains how this works. A person puts in their money. Obviously, it's at 0% profit or loss at that point. Should the value of the asset go down, they still get the full amount of the asset in return at the expiration of the note. If there is an increase in the value of the asset, the person has a potential for uh, equity upside. This depends on the participation rate. Generally, the, the person or company that is writing the note will take a, a fee off the top for their level of risk. So essentially, we have a bond plus a call option. This could also be any other asset, such as an equity. An asset plus a call option, they get linked into an equity-linked note. There is principal protection, and there is the possibility of equity participation, though not at the same rate as the overall market if the equity is increasing. Here's just a nice table that shows how this works. This assumes 100% participation rate. A person puts in $1,000. If the return on the asset is 50%, then they get their principal payment of $1,000 back plus the 50% uh, return for a total payment of $1,500. If there is a negative 50% return, they get their $1,000 back and no return on the note, but you can see there is downside protection. This also comes with opportunity cost had they participated at the full market rate. There can still be opportunity costs even in a down market because an investor has lost the use of their invested principal for the term of the ELN. Well, because these ELNs are selling call options, there is a premium that is paid to the fund and the fund then returns those premiums to the investors. 
All right, I mentioned that the other way that they try to achieve this nice dividend is by investing in companies that are potentially undervalued or low volatility. There are 100 equities within the JEPI ETF. The bulk of these, or the highest percentage, are going to be the equity-linked notes, uh, each of which you can see are occupying just about 3% of the ETF. The remainder is made up by companies that are well-known and well-respected. You can see here Microsoft, Target, Alphabet, Eli Lilly, Costco, Old Dominion, Nike, Procter & Gamble, Hershey, Kimberly Clark, and so on. The value of these companies is well known and the increase in value of these companies help to generate that capital appreciation, the second goal. Let's take a quick look at how they're doing on the first aim, producing a nice dividend. Again, this ETF has only been around since May of 2020, but we can see here the dividends that have been paid monthly. It varies from almost 29 cents per share in one month to approximately 54 cents per share at its highest. This is quite a wide swing. This also brings us to the capital appreciation, the second goal. We can see that back in July of 2020, the price of JEPI was just a little shy of $50 per share. Fast forward now, and we see that the price of JEPI is just a little less than $62 per share. JEPI actually hit its 52-week high on Friday, July 23rd. So on the first two goals, they're doing pretty well. A dividend yield of around 7.7% and a one-year change in stock price of approximately 17%. That is pretty darn good. Now, of course, that security of having downside risk comes with the upside loss that can happen in an up market. We see that compared to the overall S&P 500, the returns, overall returns are not as good now let's just finish up the discussion of JEPI before we hit what might be better. This is just a nice little table that shows the volatility of JEPI versus the S&P 500. We see here that the standard deviation on JEPI is 9.04% and the S&P 500 is less than that. So the volatility of the assets within JEPI is actually greater right now than the S&P 500. Again, remember that this has only been around for a little more than a year and so uh, this should not necessarily be taken as what the long-term volatility will look like. Now on to the last question. Is there something out there that might be better? This will compare JEPI, uh, the S&P 500 ETF Trust, AMOM, which I have made a video about and I am really excited about, QYLD, which is very commonly known and also which we have made a video about, and another one which I am interested in and I'm currently doing some research on, the PIMCO Stock Plus Long Duration ETF, PSLDX is the ticker symbol. I want to use this graph to show you the returns of a $10,000 investment in June of 2020 and where that money would be sitting now. Your eye may be quickly drawn to this purple line here and uh, trying to figure out which ETF this is. This is the one I'm very excited about, AMOM. Uh, it's by Kraft, which is a company out of Korea. It is AI enhanced, meaning that it's a computer uh, telling when to buy and sell. And you can see that right now it is far outgaining these other entities. It also has only been around for a short time, so its track record is not very long. I encourage you to go watch uh, the video that I did on AI enhanced ETFs and consider AMOM. Now, if we compare the other two that are widely known and people are uh, particularly investing in or making YouTube videos about QYLD and JEPI, we can see that those two are actually lagging significantly behind with QYLD actually bringing up the rear. And just for comparison's sake, for those who are interested in yields, since JEPI is often used for uh, the dividend, here's a comparison of how these uh, stack up over the past 12 months we can see that the 12-month yield on JEPI is right around 8%. The 12-month yield on QYLD is just shy of 12%. And the 12-month yield on the one that I'm really interested in, uh, PSLDX, we're looking at just shy of 17%. So the answer to the last question, is there something out there that could be better? Uh, yes, I think that that is obvious. Uh, from these last uh, graphs that I have shown you. 
Does that mean that Jeppy is a poor investment? Not in the least. We saw the companies that they are investing in. Those are very reputable companies. I think that in a down market, uh, Jeppy provides a lot of downside protection by using their uh, exchange listed note strategy. Let me not fail to mention that one other plus side of Jeppy is the fees that they charge. We're looking at 0.35%. Of course, just the S&P 500 is 0.09%, but that is a passively managed ETF. And when we look at the other expense ratios, we're seeing from 0.66% to 1.01%. So am I purchasing Jeppy? The answer is probably not. I already have some QYLD, and I think that in many ways uh, that is sufficient for me, even though I'm paying a little bit higher of an expense ratio, certainly the dividend returned is significantly uh, better, at least at the moment. Again, the one that I'm really excited about is AMOM from Kraft. I'd encourage you to go and watch that AI enhanced video. I think this graph says a lot about AMOM, and I think that artificial intelligence is going to uh, start becoming more and more prevalent within the investing world. That's it for today. As always, get the young people in your life investing. Help them establish a solid base in life before they uh, leave your influence and even after they leave your influence. Until next time, enjoy your investing.